Luther Jackson was the jewel. It was, it was the, the best thing that happened to the whole community. I mean, the community. Parents were very proud of it, I was very proud of it, and we kept it that way. Well, my fond memories were mainly the people, the teachers, and all the activities that I could join. I couldn't wait to get into ninth grade so I could play softball or basketball track. I, I guess my fondest memory is just getting there because um, for me, I was bused to Manassas for two years. So Luther Jackson was a heaven sent for me. Actually, I could almost walk there from where I live, and uh, most of the time I did. Uh, but just just having that school there for all of us uh, youngsters in Fairfax County, because we didn't have a high school, uh, some of our uh, friends went to Washington and to other counties. Going to Luther Jackson, students came from all over the county uh, because it was the only African American high school for us to go to. People came from Alexandria, Gum Springs, Falls Church, yeah. Vienna. We were from Fairfax, and that was the thing I liked, meeting everybody. That was, that was the thing that was sort of neat, because uh, if you look at Luther Jackson, and we always say, it's sort of like in the center, with like a hub. And uh, all the, the folks coming in from all over the county, Bellis Crossroad, down the Root Warden Corridor, over Chesterbrook, all the way up the center, all of us would come. Every day we would mingle together. We'd, all the buses would come in, and we knew black kids all over the county. Each one of us from different areas, we learned there were other people in our same position in other places. Before, we isolated like in Spring Bank, and then suddenly there was the outside world, and we learned there were other people like ourselves. I enjoyed the uh, you know, back then going to the black school, the camaraderie was so great. Uh, and the thing is, I was always an explorer type of person, you know, and I said, man, I met this guy, he's from Falls Church, you know, or I met this guy from Bellish Crossroads, and all the people from all over the area come to this one little school. You know, if, when I started at Bryant, well, everybody's from right around this little circle, but at the black school, you meet people from Gum Springs, Springbank, Bellis Crossroads, Falls Church, Maryfield. All the way out to talk, like the um, Chantilly, that even kids from Chantilly yeah, had to Vienna, come here. Right. And, mm -hmm. and I thought that was great to meet these people, you know. And we became friends for life. And we really were really into it. It was the best school spirit, you know, when nobody ever wanted to miss anything at that school. Oh, we rocked it. We rocked it. And the thing about it is uh, we had everything. We, we, we did everything. We had drama. We had the bands. We had competition with that. We had oh, the yeah. choir. Yeah. Uh, we had the science competition. We were in everything. Most of all the males there participated in some sports activities, and it was encouraged. and. and all the group stuff, they got a lot of participation for a small school. You know, the band and chorus and, and football, basketball and everything. And that's that was everybody's social events, a social part of growing up. You would always attend. I mean, we'd catch the bus and go to Luther Jackson on the Saturday for a football game or something like that and even pack a lunch, you know. Uh, you know, we played all the sports, and by the time we were seniors, we were beating all of the teams around here that were, you know, really good teams. You know, the whole community, man, they go, you playing so-and-so Friday night, we gonna be there, and you got your guys from off the street corner there, and and, uh, and I, I can remember we would play uh, basketball games like TC or George Washington High School. I mean, it's sold out at six o'clock. This is high school. You know, at six o'clock, the, the little uh, gymnasium is, I mean, slam packed. They had to lock the doors, can't let anybody else in. Uh, you know, it'd be people filling up the stands and all the way around the edge of the, and that was the way in Alexandria and most of the places we, could go, we would go to. One of the things that was part of our basketball thing was dunking the ball. The um, last class at Luther Jackson, you know, on a 12-man squad, this is high school, 
had about eight guys that were dunking the ball. And, you know, they bounced it off the backboard. And, I mean, the people would come for the dunk show sometime. And, you know, and I used to, you know, you know, do these reverse dunks and stuff, you know. So my, all of the corner road people could jump. But I think it was because we had to walk everywhere. <laughs> and football was the same way back then, you know. Friday nights, I mean, people were everywhere. The stands on both sides of the fields were uh, filled with uh, visiting teams. Most of the teams we played against didn't have face masks. Nobody ever had a mouthpiece. And, you, I mean, you could hit somebody anywhere. You know, you could go after their knees. Uh, you could hit them in the face with your elbow. I enjoyed knocking people out. <laughs> I played uh, offensive guard with no face guard. <laughs> I played uh, uh, defensive linebacker, no face guard. We didn't have face guards. If you saw those helmets in the picture on football, because no face guards, and you'd uh, you'd have bloody noses and teeth knocked out and all this stuff, you know. So, but it was football, and that was a manly thing to do. So we did it. When the boys played football and I, I joined the team of washing their football suit so I could get to go to the football game. <laughs> I did, my mom and them didn't have the money for me to go when they, they played, so I, with, along with other girls and boys, uh, we washed the football uniforms and kept them clean, and then when they played football, we got to go to the game free. We could only play schools that had all black players. Uh, we could play the D.C. schools like uh, Spingarn, Armstrong, Chamberlain, Carver of Rockville was a black school, Pamunkey High School in Indian Head, that was a black school. So we'd go to Fredericksburg, we'd go to Richmond, we'd go to uh, Winchester, Virginia. Burry Hill. And you know, they used to uh, split the gate. So we would go to Roanoke because they'd have 15,000 people in the stands. And, and uh, so we'd split the gate and you know, we'd have enough stuff to pay for a whole lot of stuff in the school, but that was nothing compared to Maggie Walker in Richmond. It'd be 25,000 people at the game. And when Maggie Walker and Armstrong, the two Richmond schools played, it was 40,000 people at the games. For me, Luther Jackson was great. Uh, my mother drove the school bus, so we rode the school bus with my mother. Oh, and I was a cheerleader. Uh oh <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Forgot the cheerleading, that was great. Oh, yeah, we had yeah. to ride the bus for ever going to some of the schools. A lot of times students weren't able to um, go to act school or after school events um, because you had to be, you had to have the transportation to go to, to Luther Jackson High School. So because we were so scattered through the county, a lot of us didn't go back for basketball games, football games, or, or anything like that because we didn't have buses that would take us after school um, home. Because we didn't have buses to transport us to practices and stuff right. like that, we had to figure out our own way how to get home from school after practices. And yeah. my, our mother drove a bus, so she t took a lot of the teams to these games and things, so I would hop in on those too, you know. I enjoyed that. <laughs> I'm all in front of my mom. <laughs> <laughs> then we'd have a ride home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see. So the, that was great. And they, you know, they had no problem with the, with me riding with her. She had the bus, and everything was fine. So I was all over the place. Nobody messed with Miss Marshall, did You know that. <laughs> <laughs> and then after graduation, I became a school bus driver, and I drove to Luther Jackson, and I was there until the school closed, driving it. Sometimes, some guy that you didn't even know come over and tell you what a great job you did and slap you in the hand and you realize you got twenty dollars in your hand. I mean we weren't um, doing anything illegal but uh, they would be so proud of us you know for you know representing the community or something. Uh, going to barber shop and you know uh, you know you're like a local hero. I think Luther Jackson groomed you for the world. Our teachers said that when the, you left their classroom, you could go anywhere in the world and compete with anyone in the world. I'll give you an example. I learned French in Luther Jackson High School. I didn't take any college French, 
but when I started to work at the library, they gave me a sheet to translate. And I translated in French because that was what I knew best. You could choose any language. And believe it or not, facts and records will approve at the Library of Congress. They hired me. They hired me there as a GS-5 and using my language, I retired as a GS-12 based upon what I learned at Luther Jackson High School. I did not take any college French classes. I learned my French at Luther Jackson. I remember Mr. Williams, who was the principal, you know, he was uh, really a cool guy and everybody admired him because he was a dapper tester and, uh, and a really nice guy. And Mr. Williams uh, knew everybody and what was going on and he, he was just smart and he understood like he, uh, Mr. Woodson used to come to our school probably once a week at first and uh, he got more stuff from Mr. Woodson because Mr. Woodson didn't want us to be unhappy. You know, so we always had brand new football uniforms. You know, most schools got football uniforms every three or four years. We got brand new stuff every year. Basketball uniforms, you know, we had everything. My favorite class was a uh, business class. Mrs. Warren, or Miss Warren, actually she was at that time. She was my favorite teacher. And I just loved her to death. And she would give me those passes that Mr. Williams would ask me, little girl, where you going? <laughs> I guess my favorite class, of course, was Jim. Miss Williams, because she was great. I like Miss James, too. My favorite teacher was Mrs. Brown. Mrs. Brown, I loved her to death. She was my biology teacher. And I had in my yearbook that I was going to be a biology teacher. And I accomplished that goal. I became a biology teacher because of her. My second favorite was my French teacher, Mrs. Fontenroy. I was in love with her also. <laughs> loved her to death. I just loved to see her walk and say, who saw a new Macdon? I said, woo, woo, wee, wee. <laughs> <laughs> my history teacher, his name was uh, uh, Harold Lawson. He lived over in McLean. When the only way you knew you were in McLean was that there was a great big tree on Route 7. <laughs> he used to always say that history is his story and whoever tells a story and gets it in a book, that's what people believe happened. And that may not be the truth. And he impressed upon us to always uh, get at least three sources, you know, when we wanted to prove something or know something. So that always, always stuck with me. And, and we were taught, we had a lot of good young teachers and they didn't always teach out of the book because they would talk to us about what was going on in the world today. If you did not get an education at Luther Jackson, it was your fault, it was your fault literally, because the teachers, if they had to rehearse you and tutor you individually, they took their extra time. When you came out of Luther Jackson, although it was a high school, you could have finished at least a second year college with the education that you got out of Luther Jackson. It was wonderful. And I've gone back to school since, but I know my basis came from them. And I will always give Luther Jackson the credit for my success and, my, and even my career, because I wouldn't have chosen that. And I don't think the Library of Congress would have hired me if I didn't have the basis that I had coming in. I, yeah. I, we had to agree. All, every, yeah. every single one of them was, was good and, and dear to our hearts. You know, yes. there's no question about that. You know, so. <laughs> and one of the things were the teachers were young. Yes. They were just fresh out of college. Right. So we didn't realize they were that young. You know, we just recognized them as teachers. And we, I was quite surprised to find out just how young they were. So many things I learned that children don't have an opportunity to learn in high school now. I don't think the, the attention and the intensity of learning is passed down the way it was in all black schools by black teachers who wanted the, their race to succeed. 